That stunning view behind me, the Glasshouse Mountains here in southern Queensland. I've been looking forward to this trip for some time. Before I go on though, some facts and figures for you. There's 11 of those little mountains out there. The highest, Mount Biwa, is 555 metres above sea level. They were named by Captain James Cook. And they are comprised or made of lava that has hardened inside a volcano. Now, if you don't care about any of that, like Sean O right here. I'll tell you what the glass house is absolutely famous for. It's big hills, <laughs> ruts, and a lot of mud. That's what we came to do. It is true, and I was getting to that. I think we should go meet the boys. With no further so. ado. Well, I think so, mate. They're probably lined up, air and down, waiting for us. Ready to rock and roll. Glasshouse Mountains, let's get into them. Excited, mate. You jump in your truck, I don't want you. No, I'm not going on yours. Looking for a mad deal on the gear that you're chasing? Like this awning, I've got you covered. Keep an eye out throughout this video for an exclusive discount code and get 10% off store-wide for all Full Drive Supercenter YouTube subscribers. And as always, enjoy this adventure because this is an epic trip. The Glasshouse Mountains are just over an hour north of Brisbane. This area has become a playground for all sorts of outdoor enthusiasts and has a heap of tracks that range from easy to absolutely insane. We're here to tackle some of the iconic challenges that have been pointed out by those that know best, the locals. Have a look over there on the left, boys. Look at that, over there on the left. It looks like a mountain, mate, made of glass. I tell you what, I'm so excited. I've never been to the Glasshouse Mountains, believe it or not. Mate, from North Queensland, this is just awesome. Nah, first time for me, fellas. First time I've been out here. A couple of locals at the pub were saying last night, this is the Coffs Harbour of South East Queensland. Well, Sean, I hope you don't, you don't roll it again then, mate. Bad memories, I'm assuming. Look, I'm not going to promise anything, mate, but I'll give it a red-hot go. It's time now to leave the dirt road and get on the tracks, and that means dropping some pressure out and locking in the hubs. That's it. Now, look, you're watching this, so I don't think you're going to have a hard time understanding what I'm about to say next. I have just aired down, locked in the hubs, first day of a new trip. We're about to go and hit the first track in the Glasshouse Mountains. There are not many things in life that get me as pumped and as excited as this moment right now. Let's get into it. Boys, I have a feeling this is the, well, it is definitely the entry to the first track. Now, I really don't know what to expect, but this is the glass house, so we probably should expect the unexpected. Well, the stories I've been told are, are, are true. This place is pretty wild. Well, just look at the start of it. It looks it. Hey, Dustin, there's quite a steep entry into this little hole, mate. You might want to take it nice and gently. I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to be the guinea pig. Wish me luck. Yeah, good luck, mate. I'm, my toolboxes are crying already. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that. Right now it's spring and in fact the temperatures are starting to rise just a little bit but there's parts of the Glasshouse Mountains that will stay wet and muddy all year round. That's, that's wet, that's very wet. <laughs> that was a lot of noise, a lot of mud flicking out. This next one actually has got me a bit concerned. All I can see is a 30 sitting in front of me, I can't see nothing. <laughs> oh. The GU fits perfectly in that hole, it's almost like it was tailor made for it. That looks stuck. Well, there you go. You know, what I'd like to say is that I've got a run on the board. No, I don't. I'm out for a duck. That's it. Glasshouse Mountains, one. Graham, nil. You need a hand there, bud? Yeah, mate, just grab a recovery kit, eh? Yeah. Righto. Time to pull out the Dominator on the mighty GU, and I haven't even gone 100 metres. Yep, yeah, that's four-wheel drive action style. Maybe get in there. There we go. I want to keep an eye on everything at once here. And of course, let the winch do most of the work and not big holes whilst I'm coming out. It's got a really moderate throttle on right now. That's some really slippery mud. There you go, I'm out. Good luck to the boys, I say. Oh, goodness. Check out this clay soil here. Anywhere you get the volcanic activity that created the Grass Glasshouse Mountains, a great deal of erosion, you're going to get this clay soil. And that. I reckon is just a taste of what's to come. You saw me coming out of here, traction was just about zero, and that is what is synonymous with the Glasshouse Mountains. Cannot wait to find a bit more of it. I hope to drive it though. That's gonna be the key. Let's get Sean through here. Where's that little drop off? She drops off quite heavy here. Okay, Sean's had the benefit of watching me do this. I reckon he's gonna get through here, no dramas at all. Of course, I could be wrong. <laughs> I made it about three metres into the first track of the first day. 
Welcome to the Glass House Mountains. <laughs> well, that didn't go to plan. I told you I'd wait out here, yeah. I was walking out of the wicket and got caught. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. As it turns out, Sean I was got hung up on a huge rock that was hiding in the mud. But that's not all. I think this is probably the second, maybe even the third time that this has happened to Sean on one of our trips. I, every time he compresses really hard on this front right, he actually inverts the spring. It's not a big deal. We can pop it back out again by unweighting this tyre. You'll actually hear it in a second pop back out, but it's probably something we have to address at some point, I reckon. That's it, that's it. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, no, no, no. Put that in the back of Shauno's truck. <laughs> he might need that again. All right, let's get you out of this bog off. Mate, I think you got unlucky there. I don't know how I missed it, to be honest. We made the decision right here to pull Shauno forwards rather than backwards. He has got a winch up the back of the Dirty 30, as we all know. By going forwards, we figure we'd do the least damage on that massive rock that he's got directly under that rear diff. Just wheel backwards. Yeah, the whole Dirty 30 is high and dry right there. That rear wheel is just spinning with that rock lifting it high up off the ground. Just a little bit more and we should be free here. Yep, that's us. Yeah. Straight, straight, straight. Sean's out of that first hole now, straight into the second. But I've got to say, it's just not his day. Have a look. <laughs> he fits exactly in that hole just like the GU, and just like me, he's left high and dry. Lucky the Dominator's got plenty of life in it. Is this like some sort of a tutorial you're giving here? Oh, how to winch. How to winch, yeah, like twice in one track. Is that what you're doing? Just, I mean, I'm, I'm no, I got nothing, no, I got nothing. I, that guy's, <laughs> I got stuck twice no, in good on you, mate. 25 metres. It's good that you're trying, though. That is, that is greasy mud, really greasy mud. Lockers on, let's do it. Justin's truck looks so clean and pretty up there. It's gonna last approximately 22 seconds. Since the cape Justin has put his thinking cap on and done quite a bit of work to the GU. He swapped out that rear diff for four sixes so that he's got a lot more reduction down low. And he's also upgraded his turbo so that he's got a heap more power. This thing is one heck of a beast. Wasn't even a bog hole there. Through the first, really it wasn't a challenge at all. That's good work. Now, on to the second. Well, that's three from three. Out with the winch. Come on, Justin, let's get you out of there. Thank you, Graham. Justin's clear of the mud for now, but only a moment later and disaster almost strikes. I tell you what, I really thought he was going over there. Dude. Oh, what was he doing? Oh, what was that? That descent after the bog holes is quite deceiving and almost took Justin out, but not this time. It's Pete from Diesel Fit's turn. His 76 series is chipped, tuned and up for the challenge. Get a load of how this thing sounds. I guess you'd say. We've only just scratched the surface and the Glasshouse Mountains are already putting up a good fight in the first round. That's not going to deter us though. After all, this is why we're here. To test our skill, our trucks, our products and have a ball at the same time. Alright, I can see a line over to the left but I think I might take this little right hand bit here. Or I might try and take a better line than that. Alright. No more mucking around. Come, boys. I had to readjust and have another crack, and look, I've made it. But, did I speak too soon? Yeah, that was just a bit flexy through there. I had to be a bit careful. Suddenly something happens and it feels it's very strange. Something's not right here. 
The Dirty 30 really should eat this, but as you can see, it's a lot rougher than it looks. Shono's been thrown around in there like a rag doll, and there's not a lot of room on that right-hand side before that tree bites the side of the canopy. Yeah, come on, boys. Keep going. Righto, Justin's up, mate. Keep an eye on that tree. I don't want you doing any damage. Lovely. Powerful. Pete, well, I don't think anything's going to stop him. Oh, truth. Did you see that wheel lift? By the time the boys had all got to the top, I was already well aware of what had caused that strange sensation hey, in the GU. Yeah, boys. You check out the flex on this thing. Yeah, mate. <laughs> well, I thought I might just change oh. the tire here. Oh. Yeah, why not? Yep, doesn't look good, mate. Yep, I don't think it needs rocket science to figure this out. I've snapped an axle. <laughs> I think you've aired down too much. Right? I have, mate. I've really, I've let the tire down a lot here. So, um, wow. Yeah. First things first, we're going to raise the vehicle up and get a better look at exactly Whoa. what's happened nice. and how we're going to go about fixing this. Yeah, nice we'll get those wheel studs off, remove the tyre and see what's left. Yeah, as we suspected, snapped axle. Well, there's your, there's your main problem, mate. Because I stopped on such a bad angle, we're going to have to winch forward to try and get the yeah, GU on some flatter ground. Alright. What's it? This does not feel nice at all. Ah, the poor old GU. How's that? Okay, now we're in a much safer position. We can work on the truck. We're using a ratchet strap here to tie that rear diff to the chassis. That way, we're decreasing the amount of suspension travel that we have to lift up when we bring everything back into working height. I always carry a big bottle jack with me. I think they're one of the more handy bits of recovery equipment you can have. The bottle jack just gives us the last little bit of lift that we need. And now, it's into the repairs. Oh, I'll make, I'll make us a little workbench, mate. One of the real beauties of trips like this is that we often surround ourselves with blokes who know exactly what's going on. Not to say I don't, probably could fix this in a couple of minutes, but I just figured Sunny, Pete needed the practice. Sunny, so I'm going to sit back and watch him, see how he goes. All part of what we love so much. Exactly, mate, exactly. First things first, we've got to remove yes, that brake assembly. That's in the way and it's also Whoa, busted. For now, we're going to remove that and I'm going to rely on three brakes. You can see we've placed that spare wheel underneath the truck. That way, if anything does happen and it does drop, it's not going to go too far. How's that? Great caliper. Job done. Hey! A quick phone call to a couple of locals that we know up this way, and they managed to bring out the entire axle assembly in one piece. That makes life for us so much easier. See, I'll pretend that's not heavy. <laughs> <laughs> look at that, mate. Probably need one of those. That's what they should look like. I don't think that's quite a factory thickness just there, mate. Factory thickness. Let's see if that looks better. From here it's just a simple matter of removing the broken piece and sliding everything back into place. We then simply bolt it back in and we're good to go. With that wheel ratcheted back on, we were ready to hit the tracks. Alright, well, what do you reckon? I reckon we go and continue, drive some more tracks, what do you say? Well, what's the sound of that mate? You right there with all your tools mate? No, I'm cleaning clean them all, don't worry about that. Yeah, no, it's, well, it's the only thing you've done. <laughs> all whole day. <laughs> If you've driven 100 metres, you've winched 75 of that. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy whose wheel fell off. Like... Yeah, but I, didn't, I haven't had to winch yet. Oh, oh a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I didn't have a wheel. It doesn't matter, you start to winch. Excuses. We spent the rest of that afternoon tackling a few more challenges and trying to gain back some pride that had been damaged along with the trucks. Pretty soon though, and the sun had reached the horizon and it was time to head for camp. It had been an interesting day and a great introduction to what is a region for serious for the driver. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam, but warning it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Four Wheel Drive Supercentre, you get more for less.
I tell you what, I hope you've got two pairs of undies on today, boys, because we have got something spectacular lined up for today. I like the sound of that. I'm up for it. Yeah, bring it on, bring it on. We're heading for a track called Ho Chi Minh. Now, I've heard word from a few of the locals that it's an absolute doozy, but like everything, we've got to get there first, though. Hey, lads, we've got a puddle of consequence up here. I'm going to do my window up, <laughs> just in case. I'm really surprised by the amount of water around here. They haven't had a lot of rain and it's been quite a dry winter up here. All right, mate, I'll give it a whirl. My approach to tackling any mud puddle is to go in slow and gun it once you're in there. That way you get a feel for the bottom. You're not hitting it too hard and doing damage to your truck. Woo, that's done. Here you go, fellas, I'll give her a go. The start of this track is one of the deepest ruts I've ever seen. In fact, it made me wonder just how it got to be this deep. And then we drop off into the great unknown. By goodness, look at this, will you? She's all downhill from here, mate. <laughs> Wowzers. And there's not a lot of room to spare on the sides. Yeah, mate. Whoa. Go through, just... <laughs> my approach here is to take it very gently until my nose touches that mud puddle and then give it some gas. So frustrating, I'm hung up. Although I must say, yes. it's good to see Sean A getting dirty. Good on you, buddy. Oh, throw, throw me a snatch. <laughs> oh. I reckon this is near tree, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's pretty muddy in there. I could fellas. actually feel that I wasn't going anywhere. It was hopeless. The only way forward here was to grab the winch. I'm a bit gutted, as you can tell. I think I've used the Dominator more than I've used anything else on this trip so far. That winch is not going to let me down, I know it for a fact. Okay, all I want to do here is just get unstuck. Then I'm going to take the winch off and have a crack at the next section. It really was a fine line here. Too much and you risk tipping onto the driver's side. Not enough mumbo and you weren't going to make it. But with just the right amount, I think you could have driven that. Maybe one of the other boys will. For now, though, I've got to rely on the mighty Dominator to get me out of strife once again. Yoo-hoo! Oh, that's steep. <laughs> and out of it. That is steep! Hey! <laughs> the look on his face says it all. <laughs> That's a shoot! He's got a shoot! <laughs> I didn't think he'd stop with just one try. He might just drive this, you know. Ooh, that is a lot of mumbo, and you can see what I'm talking about. Too much, and you're going to tip over onto the driver's side, and we don't want that. Well, from here. Well, that was a pretty darn good effort, if you ask me. And if you look underneath the carriage right here, you'll actually see that Sean O's picked up a shoe, somebody's shoe that has been lost and found. <laughs> so if you lost a shoe at the bottom of this hole, come and claim it. It's underneath the dirty 30. You can really see the <laughs> angle there. Looking out the driver's window, all that is visible on camera is mud. <laughs> it's not often that happens. Wow, happens a fair bit to Sean, eh? Mate, that thing has gotten a lot deeper, hasn't it? Yeah, Definitely. He's, he's chewed it for us yeah, this time. Really has, really has. I'll just be really conscious about your side weight coming up through yeah, there. It's a little bit top heavy. Yeah. What, I, what I might do is I might get that uh, right in front wheel up on that bank just to try and maybe yep. keep it a bit more level. Okay, Justin's going to guide the big GU down Ho Chi Minh. I reckon this start bit is going to put the wind up him. You! That's straight down. Okay, Justin's down and into that first mud puddle, and well, he got through that and made it look easy. Look of concentration on his face. Oh, and that is a big wheel lift. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I don't think we take a risk here. Let's get that winch out and get him onto level ground. Woo! Good as that. 
That was awesome. Something tells me that powerful Pete is going to put on quite a performance. Yeah, beauty, mate. All right, come on down. We'll um, guide you through that bottom bit. I'm really conscious of that oh, mate, side, the driver's right, side. It is so close, and that truck is immaculate, brand new. He's down unscathed, and now it's time for that first bog hole. Have a listen to that truck, will you? He's fighting the steering wheel, but he's made it through. That's a good drive. Get out I reckon he'll do this. <laughs> Mate, that was a sensational drive. Once again, we've decided winch to take it. the sensible option and winch him through here. There's no point doing damage just to prove a point. Maybe he could have driven it. Maybe he will next time. Just looked wicked. Absolute beast. Just looked wicked. Like, nearly got as much horsepower as the 30, I reckon. Nearly as much. Nearly. Now nearly. we've got down in the guts of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. We've got to get back out. And the only way is up this rutted out track. All right, mate, do you want to come up? I'll um, do my best to spot you up here. There's only really one way you can go to straight up these ruts. Right, eh, mate, here we go. Try and crawl up through here, I think. Keep everything as straight as possible. Use these logs that someone's put in here before. This short section of track was remarkably claggy still. Although it doesn't look it, there was a lot of moisture left in this clay. I think here, traction is going to be one of our biggest issues. You can see I'm just crawling through here, taking my time, nice and gentle. Turn hard left now. Yep, turn, turn. Let me just give it a bit of anger, see if that works. All right, um, I'm going to push this log in, mate, and um, hopefully it bites and drives up. Shono's doing a fair bit, of, fair bit of road work out there. I think his plan here is just to try and stop me from sliding down to that rut, and if I hit those logs, then at least, hopefully it'll direct me back up the hill. Drive right up to that log on, on that just go up and I'll turn when I turn. I don't think it's going to be possible whilst I'm in this rut. I'm going to need to straddle it, get up on the driver's it's side, up, up onto the edge of this rut, and then try and stop cut down. across. Mate, really nice. Woo! Real committed, you had to. Yeah, and it just it. made it. Like, yeah. if you backed off, you would have went straight back in there. Yeah. Really good drive, mate. Right up. Sean O's into it in the dirty 30. Yeah, this is where having a spotter is invaluable. Yeah, nice and gentle, mate. Right here, I'm making sure that Sean is nice and high. Then I'm going to tell him when to turn hard left and gun it up and off that bank. Oh, as you can see there, backing off for just a second almost causes you to slide back down. It's a committing drive, you've just got to go. That was committing. Good drive, good drive. That was either drive it or roll over in there. Certainly. <laughs> Justin weighs a lot more than us here, and although he's got a lot of torque, a lot of power, I have a feeling he might struggle getting the rear of this GU up and out of that rut. Turn hard, turn hard. That's it, Justin. Bad Stick head. your tongue out. That'll help, mate. Nice and slow. You're going too fast. No, you're going too fast. No, there's no way you can do it whilst you're in the rut. You really have to straddle that rut. Get up high. Yeah, you need to be higher up, dude. Go back. Have a look at that mud now. There's been two trucks through. Justin's the third. You can really see it's gotten chewed up. There's just no traction there at all. We're really concerned about panel damage here. Justin's come all the way from Cairns. NQ crash. And I reckon he wants to go back in one piece. Let's get the winch out. It's a whole heap of trees to choose from here. But the reason I've gone for this one as opposed to the bigger one up in front is that I actually want a more angular pull here. I'm not actually trying to pull him up there. I'm just trying to stop him from sliding back down the slope. So, go. Yeah, I think this will work a treat. Oh, look at that. Camper going, camper coming. Stop, stop, stop. Righto, Pete from Diesel Fit in Toowoomba. He's seen the other trucks go through. He's got plenty of power, plenty of experience. He's going to give this a red hot go. Right there, you can see there's no traction. You just slide straight back in. That's it, Pete. Get up nice and high. By getting nice and high, when you then turn left, you can almost commit in a straight line. If you're down in that rut when you try, it's extremely difficult to get out. Oh, jeez. I didn't think he was going to make it for a second there. Woo that was awesome. 
Well done, Pete. Good drive, well, mate. Good, good drive. Yeah, that was a good drive, mate. Really yeah, yeah. nice and easy. Top drive. Try and keep the throttle out of it. Powerful like key. you said, but just the right timing yeah. for the throttle. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. amount. Yeah. Does the job. Yeah. Okay, we're all up and out of that track. The reason we're cutting off this track right here is because above us is a rut that is Whoa. about the size of two trucks <laughs> falling there and you're guaranteed to do panel right, damage. Mate. Now we've taken the bypass track past the worst parts of Ho Chi Minh track because, of course, we forgot to bring our comp trucks on this trip. However, we did have to cross it near the top, and that was going to prove to be tricky enough. The problem with this section is that it's off camber sloping down the hill. That's never a nice feeling. The key really is to commit. You have to just drive directly across in a straight, smooth motion. If you stop and rock back and forth, unfortunately there is the very real danger of going over. That drop off on the driver's side is nearly an entire vehicle in height. Go over there and you wouldn't stop at just one roll. It's quite an unnerving feeling. Oh, you mean? It's pretty awkward. Ooh, I tell you what, I always get a little bit of a pucker moment when Shawno's front wheel lifts up like that. That's it, mate. Straight across. Get out of the danger zone. Uh, I'm going to try a different line to that. I'm going to go right out to the right. OK, Justin's got to just commit to this and drive across in one smooth motion. There it is, that front wheel lifting up. It doesn't feel good inside the yeah, cab. back off. Got to drive. And there he goes. Committed and drove straight across. That's good work, mate. Good work. And you nearly ran me over. Thanks, boys. Powerful Pete didn't even hesitate. Straight across. I don't think he even looked to his right-hand side. I guess he figured what he couldn't see couldn't hurt him. <laughs> That's not a bad mentality. With Ho Chi Minh chalked up as an experience, we made it into camp, right on the edge of a beautiful little creek. Before you start judging me, there is a reason why I've got my awning like this. And that's it right there. It's a big dirty band of black clouds. I have a feeling we might get a few drops of rain tonight. There's nothing worse than damaging your awning or waking up with a deluge of rain on top of you because you haven't pinned your awning out properly. I reckon putting it on an angle like that is good, solid advice because water's just gonna run off that. I'm gonna be dry under here in the swag. And in fact, so much so, I actually hope that it rains tonight. Sean and Justin have drawn the short straw tonight. Their turn to cook. They're going to be making one of my faves too, Spag Bog. And Justin is an absolute gun at it. Sean, well, I think he might be just along for the ride. <laughs> I'm going to sit back and enjoy a beer around the campfire. Well, tonight on the menu, we've got spaghetti bolognese, but it's not any old spaghetti bolognese. You see, we've got Justin from NQ Crash, Justin the Italian Stallion with us right now. I'll tell you what, he's made one of the best spaghetti bolognese's, I think I can pronounce that right, yeah. I've ever tasted when I've been out camping up in Cape York, mate. So what are we going to start it's, with, it's mate? It's the touch, mate. It's the touch. I've got the camp oven. Chuck that up there. Onions first, mate. Okay. Makes the sauce a little bit sweeter. Brings, it, brings the sweetness out. Keep going, don't be shy. That's the Italian in you, for sure. <laughs> yep. I'll chuck these in. You chuck it in. We'll just do one more. Now next up, a bit of garlic. Yeah, chop that up nice and fine. I'll just stir that again for you, Sean. Throw them in. That's fine, do you like what I said there? Yep, that's, that's close enough. Throw them in, All beautiful. Right. Then we'll throw the tomatoes in. Yep. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. See, I cooked a lot of spag bowls before. The first thing I do right now, those onions are cooked, I put the mint straight in. No. Now, there's a few of us here tonight, so we'll, we'll, put, a few, we'll put all this in. Look, I've never used more than one or two of these. Throw them all. all Throw in, them all mate. in. This is just diced tomato in a can. It's perfect to take away camping with you. And what I do also, Sean, I use a bit of tomato paste. Give that a bit nice, rich texture. Stir it all up. Well, there you go. That's simmering absolutely perfectly now. It's now time to add the meat. So I'm going to jump into the Waco, mate, because I've Grab got it. all the mince in here. We'll get those pork ribs out. Yep. And in here, we've got the mint all cryovacked. That's Beautiful. the way to do it. We like to cryovac a lot of our meat. You've probably seen us do this plenty of times before, especially on the big trips we go away on. You cryovac, it'll last weeks, especially if you've got the dual zone fridge like me, the fridge freezer. Chuck it in the freezer and months you'll get out of cryovac meat. So that's going to go straight in now. Yep, now I'll chop this. All right, so that's just beef mince. So this is where Justin's recipe differs a little bit from mine. We're putting the meat in into the pasta sauce that's simmering. And that's the whole, look, the whole reason for that is juices are coming out and stuff like, mate, what exactly are you putting the meat in? 
the, the, <laughs> the reason I like doing it, I like to have the, uh, the mince and the pork, when it all cooks and simmers together, and all the juices go out and goes through, infuses with the sauce. Infuses, mate. I like that, mate. That's, that's um, infusing. That's, that's really starting to infuse. <laughs> Infuse into the pasta sauce. That's a technical cook term we like to use. Um, us chefs tend to use these sort of big words. There you go with that. That's done. You can go for All it. Right. So now we're going to infuse a bit of pork. <laughs> Look at that. That's that's new. I've never seen that done before. And you put all this pork in. You get this little treat every time you have a mouthful, and it's it, it, it thickens the sauce up, and you'll find all that nice bit of fat. It'll just melt out through the uh, through the sauce. It, it'll, well, yeah, infuse. Yeah. I think that's the word you're looking for, mate. That's a few, that's yeah. the word I'm looking for. It'll infuse itself with the, with the, uh, the actual sauce that we're doing and it, it will taste sensational. Now we've done the hard work, we just sort of let that simmer now for what, an hour? It, probably an hour. Put the lid on for a little bit, All get right. some heat into it. Chuck that on. There you go, that's been about an hour here simmering. Justin just got the pasta ready. I'll tell you what, mate, I reckon we're ready to serve. Boys, are you ready? Up. All right, all right, all right. Make a production line. It smells good. Done. That is so good, guys. No. Spaghetti bolognese. I'll tell you what. What was that? That was just, what, what do you... <laughs> Spaghetti bolognese. 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 Bol bolognese. Bol bolognese. 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 Spaghetti <laughs> bolognese. I'll tell you what. Mm. Where'd you get it from? Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. Have a look at that view out the front there. Two of the Glasshouse Mountains, 11 in the chain, that's two of them. Somewhere else there's nine hidden. This of course is the infamous <laughs> power line track. It gets its name of course because it runs along the power lines. I've been told to expect some savage ups, some savage downs, and then when you're in the middle, a lot of mud. To me though, that all adds up to one epic four wheel drive track. I can almost see the entire length of it through here and it just looks like something out of a four wheel drive playground. In fact, if you were to draw the plans for a four wheel drive playground, I reckon they'd look something like that. The ancient landscape of the Glasshouse Mountains consists of many tightly packed hills with steep ascents and descents, which are perfect for challenging four-wheel driving. The valleys are so deep out here that the power lines overhead actually disappear out of view and you could be anywhere. We're heading to a very famous section of track right down the far end of the power lines called Slipperies. Hey boys, we're about to take a hard left into a thing called Slipperies. Uh, I don't think you need any imagination as to why it's called Slipperies. No, I can only guess, mate. I've seen some of the trucks around here, and um, Slipperies an understatement. Okay, that's that's why it's called Slipperies. Now I see. <laughs> Looks like you're going straight down, mate. Yeah, when you get here, you'll see why it's called Slipperies. This looks like something from Raiders of the Lost Ark down here. This is what you call serious erosion. Have a look at how steep this is and how deep those banks are. I, I think I've just dropped off the Glasshouse Mountain. The whole section is actually very tight and there's not a lot of room to manoeuvre. All done, come through big fella. That is super tight mate, super tight. Once you get right down to the bottom, there's nowhere to turn around. There is only one way up and out. Oh, and it is an it. absolute doozy. I'd rate this at probably an B plus, A minus track. The reason I'm not giving it any higher is because it's not totally committing. If you uh, want to back off your can and have another crack at it, you're not going to fall off the edge of the earth. I'm not going to try and crawl up this. I think I might um, try and get up here with a little bit of conviction. Now, I've said this bit before, 
I'm gonna say it again because I know you'll love it. I'm not gonna get up the top there by standing here. Let's do this. I really wanna be over to the left here somewhere. It's quite a drop in. It's quite a drop. <laughs> oh, it's steer. Full point turn for the big GU. That looks pretty gnarly down there, dude. Getting down wasn't such a problem. Getting into a position to tackle this hill straight on, well, that's another story. All right. About a five point turn and I'm almost in a position to give this little hill climb a go. If you can go a little bit to your left, you'll probably have this. Now, I knew I was too far to the right, but I thought I'd give it a crack anyway. Didn't work. I need to be further over to the passenger side. Just a bit of manoeuvring, and I'm in a far better position. Getting a spotter out the front in situations like this is vital. There you go, that line was far, far better. A bit of mumbo, and the big GU was up and out. That's what I'm talking about. Woohoo! I love it when you do a challenge. It just gives you that little kick. Feels good. Okay, Sean the mighty Dirty 30. I reckon he'll eat this for breakfast. The Dirty 30 is about the same length as the GU. So he too has got to do some manoeuvring to get into position. All right. Hey, hey. To the safe <laughs> That's the line. Come on, mate. You can do this. Oh, straight. Oh. He's so free. He's really been thrown around in there. Wow, this is the hole that ate the dirty 30. You can see what happens there, he's just in a really bad angle. We can't get him lined up again to take what I consider to be pretty much only one of two possible lines you could drive out of here on. The first is way over here on the left, but you'd have to just have a ton of luck. And the other is the line I took up through the middle and just have those rocks underneath you and just scrabble your way up and get up there. But I don't think we've got much choice here but to get a winch on him because if he gets sideways on this, I'm concerned he's going to roll back into that hole. We've seen the 60, which is now 30, roll into a hole once before. Let's not do that again. Yeah, as you can see, he didn't need much there. It was just that he fell offline and he couldn't get the dirty 30 back on. The winch really only brought him up maybe a tyre's width. That's it. That's you, man. That's you. Justin's up and he's got the biggest truck of all. He's going to have the most difficulty once he gets into that bog hole down the bottom. He's not holding back though, he's not mucking around. Straight in and he's having a crack. But just like I did, he's too far to the right. He needs to get a little more left. That's it, that's the line right there. Slightly more to the left hand side and he climbs up and out. Makes it look easy. That felt good, fellas. Wow. I actually was not going to call him up then. We were going to actually reposition him and get him to go back down and take another line, but lo and behold, straight up he went. Powerful Pete with the big Chip 76 series. Watch the engine roar here. Just watch the rear of me truck, eh? Yeah, that was unreal, thanks boys. No match for the uni chip, boys, no match for the uni chip. No, mate, I thought I put the hard line. Oh, oh, both of us did. I took the winch line, that was even harder. You know it's steep when you can't see the track over the top of the bonnet. With the slippery track behind us, we've reached yet another ridge and are heading straight back down into another abyss. 
It's not unusual for water to be stored in these low-lying areas. Of course, water flows downhill, and these low valleys like this collect water from any rainfall that the area might get, and it can stay here all year round. We go straight up it. Not only is it muddy through here, but the section to come back up and out of that mud puddle is extremely flexy. This is Locker's country through and through. Right at the dirty 30 is up. It may wallow around like a pig in mud, and it may be old and noisy, but Sean loves that thing because in the end, it really is one of a kind, and it's taken him all over Australia multiple times. That mud is sticky, but it's no match for a bit of right boot. Good drive, mate. How good is that? This is the stuff we live for. Justin has manhandled his way right the way through that. No dramas at all. Good drive. And Pete, well, I don't think he's going to have any problems either. Woohoo! Righto, lads, this is a bit of a choose your own adventure. I'm going to, uh, I think I might tackle the left hand side, see how we go. This is a cracking little section of track. It's not overly long, but it's very steep, rutted, and there's banks on either side. There's also a couple of rocky jump ups right near the top. Articulation is king through here. If not, you better have lockers. I've decided to have a crack at the left hand track because I liked the look of the off camber slope halfway up. It just looked fun to drive. However, I'm going to need a bit more mumbo if I'm going to make it through. Feels to me like I'm hung up on something here. Hey, can someone just give us a spot and let me know what's, uh, what's going on here? I can't, because I'm trapped in with my seatbelt, I can't see. Just can't quite see where I'm lacking. Might just be I need to turn a wheel one way or the other. Sometimes there's no substitute for a little bit of right boot. That was one of those times. Righto, Sean, mate. Your go, mate. mate you, want, you want a spot, big fella? So like a Nissan driver to show you how to get the hill? <laughs> no, mate, I don't end up with a lid. Oh, come on now. Alright. Okay, okay, driving. How good is that? So I'll tell you what, this is one of those lines you've just got to commit. Just drive it. Have a look at that, it really does go to show just how rutted that is. Shauno's being thrown from left to right, battling that steering wheel, but he's climbed to the top with no real dramas. That's a good drive, actually. Glasshouse uh, Mountain certainly doesn't uh, fail to produce some tough tracks. Righto, Justin, bring up the big GU, mate. Oh, that's nice. That GU's locked, it's lifted, it's got everything you need for the glass house. He's made that look really easy. Have you got a preference for me? Uh, either way, I think you might touch the sides, mate. I'm not sure. Well, here it is, boys. I'm going to give it a uh, red hot go. I'm going to take a different line than you on this one, Graham. I'm going to go to the right hand side, I think, mate. That bottom section is actually pretty easy. The crux of the climb is closer to the top, right about here. Mate, power line tracks, you got to love them. Oh, mate, they're some of the toughest tracks in Australia. They're yeah. everywhere. I've got, got one in Perth. There's one in Sydney as well. Yeah, one, obviously one here in the Glasshouse yep. Mountains. Yep. Yep. Power lines means tough. Really does. I don't know how they service those things. No, God, what are they driving, a comp truck in here? <laughs> now, what do you reckon? We, we can exit off here yep. and go and do some mud, serious mud. Okay. A mile of it, roughly. Roughly a mile? Yeah. Probably called the mile of mud. I've heard, I've heard the locals talk about this one. You keen? Yeah. Let's do it. You keen, all right. <laughs> we've had hills, we've had rocks, and we've had ruts. Now it's time for some mud to finish off our glasshouse adventure. Boys, I think this is the start of the infamous Mud Mile. It should actually be called the Miracle Mile. It's a miracle if you make it through. Given that I'm up the front, I'll go first. Righto, mate. I'll um, watch you sink or swim. From where I'm parked, the track on the right looks to be a far more favourable option. However... 
yes, it was a lot deeper than I first thought. Oh, that looks sticky. Wow, that looks sticky, mate. Yeah, that does not look nice. But there's a jump up in the middle. I don't know if I can, uh, don't know if I can get over that jump up. Yeah, I see what you mean. It sort of just comes to a bit of a stop. I think the track to the left is looking a bit better now. <laughs> yeah, Roger that, mate. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I was wrong. Okay, I admit it. Don't take the track on the right when you first get out of here. Good luck with that, boys. This is pretty sloppy, eh? When we were getting ready for this trip, we were actually showing a few photos of folks that had come through the mud mile only a week before. There were shots of trucks drowned, trucks being recovered. I tell you what, this could be one long night. We'll see how we go. It's actually really shallow. Nothing seems to be stopping us at this point though. I reckon we've got this sussed. Except for that last bit. <laughs> Righto, but I'll come through. How much fun is this? Mud and mates, doesn't get much better. Heaps in it, mate. A big 12 HT, dirty 30. Look out. We're feeling fairly unstoppable at this point. But then, I reckon I spoke too soon. Get a load of this. Righto, boys, we're going to follow the leader here. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That is why you do not put your thumbs in the steering wheel. <laughs> I think I'm stuck. I don't know what I'm hung up on. See me get nailed then? Flying over by the steering wheel. Good sign. The big GU just slammed into something on the left hand side. To this day, I don't know what it was. Just done one round with the GU and it won. It was a strange sensation as well. I almost felt like I should have been able to drive forward, but for reasons I didn't understand, I just couldn't. Then it all became very clear. Yep, Graham strikes again. It's what they refer to as rolling a beat. Oh, rolling a beat. And you've done it in the worst possible predicament here. Yeah. You'll have to winch straight and let the winch do the talking. Yeah, okay. Oh. Have a look at that. I've oh, well and truly busted it. Breno is not going to lend me this GU again. Something tells me. I've got to hang. Oh, I've got to get it. Oh, yeah, I've got to get out of this spot, though. Hmm. Seems I've stuffed it pretty good. Look at our work cut out for us. Well... It happens quite regularly, doesn't matter what tyre brand you're running. Graham's just rolled the tyre off the wheel and um, it sort of must have picked up the bank here and, and kept spinning. It's just low pressures. It's the inevitable, really. <laughs> Punch your eyes down, quick. I'm out. Well, where's I'm Stanley? out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Two tyres on the one track in the same hole. What? That's a feature. <laughs> That's meant to happen, isn't it? That's how you do it, right? <laughs> just, just hold that. All right, mate. Nah, no, you think about that. See you, blokes. I'm out. All right, I think our best plan of attack here is to take these two off and deal with them at another time. Sounds like a plan. I don't think Off you go, Graham. The high lift jack is not going to work here because of the muddy ground. The safest option for us right now is to use an airbag jack. We just need to get the truck up high enough such that we can take that rim off and then put a spare back on. That's still moving. You can see here I'm just digging a bit of dirt out from underneath because I don't want to have to go too high on that airbag jack. Righto, that's the front tyre fixed. Now to do exactly the same thing on the rear. We'll get those tyres put back on the rims tomorrow. Not towards you, Pete. Not for you, Pete. There we go, let the jack down, and I reckon I'll be back on my way. Mate, I stuffed up, I did, I did, hit a wrong line, knocked all the everything off the truck. Let's try not to do that again, we'll get out of here, and I reckon we are long overdue for a cold beer. What do you reckon boys, cold beer? Rattle. Righto boys, what do you say we finish this track? I like the sound of that mate, let's get into it. But I tell you what, this track just doesn't like me at all. 
Uh, Graham, all your Max tracks just fell off. I'm just not winning, am I? <laughs> it is seriously not your day today. Well, I haven't had the most luck today, folks. How about we finish this track, head for a cold beer? Finally, we're moving along nicely and we managed to escape Mud Mile and get that long-awaited beer. What a mission. I love this stuff and so do the boys. Folks, Glasshouse Mountains, it really is the Coffs Harbour of Queensland. Get up here, check out Big Red. I'll tell you what, that is a big boys hill. If you're keen to give it a go, I'll take my hat off to you. Otherwise, there are so many other tracks out here that will challenge not only you, but also your rig. When you get to the top of the hills, look at that view, because I reckon that is one of the best views you'll find anywhere. I'm definitely coming back to this part of the world. Might see you up here, look for me on the side of a track. <laughs> I'll catch you next time on Four Wheel Drive Action. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. Our entire range of Titan Storage Drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan Double Drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy duty spring loaded tie down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long, and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double draw setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros, and SUVs, with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single draw on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide, and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide, and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, 
each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's premium camp oven stove your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind, one less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo or your shed for maximum warmth. 
and the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the premium camp oven stove as required. Inside you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.